Hello class and welcome back to another online lecture for organic chemistry. This is part of the organic synthesis series and today we're going to be talking about the halohydrin formation. So if you have not already viewed the dihalide edition, you're going to want to go back and watch that video because we revealed how this mechanism works back in the dihalide video and it's going to carry over into the halohydrin formation because we have the same first step when we do a halohydrin formation as we do in a dihalide addition. So if we get started here, you can see that we have an alkene and we have Br2 over H2O. And so if we had this just as a dihalide addition, we would just have the Br2. We would not have the H2O there. And that would add two bromines in a uh, anti-formation. And we said that if you go back and you watch that video, we said that that's always observed. So we have an anti-formation observe 100% of the time. Well, when we have a halohydrin formation, we're going to start out in the same process where we are reaching out to the bromine. The other bromine is going to leave and we're going to form the bromonium ion. But then we're going to sort of take a change where instead of the second bromine adding, we're going to add the H2O and we're going to end up with an alcohol. And so that's where the name halohydrin comes from. Halo meaning halogen addition, hydrin meaning the addition of water, which is again going to end up as an alcohol. Now, because this follows the same sort of mechanism, we're always going to observe anti-formation of our product. But here we have something that we observed that we didn't really discuss or observe in the dihalide addition, which is we're going to see a Markovnikov addition of the OH. Now this is a bit weird because we normally think of Markovnikov additions when there's a cation, and we don't actually have a formal carbocation when we go through these bromonium ions. We say that the two carbons come together, form the bromine, and then we have the other, uh, it would be the other bromine and a dihalide, or the alcohol or the water come in for the halohydrin formation. So let's take a look at this mechanism. We start out, we have an alkene, and then it's going to come take the bromine. The bromine is going to form a bromonium ion. So hopefully we're comfortable with that. Again, if not, you can go back and watch the other video lecture on the dihalide addition. And now, so when we get to this point with this bromonium ion, we have water and bromine minus. So the bromine minus came from that first step in the mechanism and the water is present. We had that underneath the arrow as well. And so, when we're considering these two, right, we're going to consider which one is going to make a better nucleophile in this case. And so you're going to have some competition between the water and the bromine trying to come in and open up this bromonium ion on the anti side of the molecule or the opposite side of where the bromonium is facing and crack that bromonium ion open and complete the reaction. And so water ends up being a very good nucleophile to come in and seek out one of these carbons. Now, what you'll notice here is that as I have to start breaking open the bromonium ion, so as the water comes in, the bromonium ion starts to break, and as it starts to break in its transition state, I'm going to have a partial positive buildup on the carbon that it's breaking away from, because as it takes its electrons back to become a regular bromine atom, the carbon that's giving those electrons up or over to the bromine is going to start to have a partial positive buildup. So we almost have a partial carbocation there that's starting to build up. Well, because of that, this is going to affect which area the alcohol decides to attack. It is always going to attack the area that has the more stable partial carbocation buildup. And we know that carbocations are more stable in a tertiary position than in a secondary position. So let's take a look at this and zoom in here a little bit. So here is the bromonium ion intermediate. And if we take a look at the two different carbons the water can attack, it can either attack here or here. Now, when I'm considering this, again, the bromine is going to leave with its electrons. So a partial positive is going to build up on whatever carbon ends up being attacked by the water. So if I take a look at this here, this one would be considered a tertiary partial carbocation buildup. This one would be a 
secondary partial carbocation buildup. And so the water in this case will always add to the tertiary carbon instead of the secondary carbon. And that's a uh, observance of Markovnikov's rule because Markovnikov says that you're going to have that nucleophile or that other portion add to the side that has the more carbon substituents. And that's because of a carbocation buildup that needs to be stabilized. So even though we don't have a formal carbocation, we have this partial buildup and you always want to send in the water to the carbon that is going to have the stabler partial buildup when we're looking at that. So tertiaries are better than secondaries. Secondaries are certainly better than primaries when selecting where to send in the water. Okay, so if we were to finish this mechanism, this bromonium ion is going to break open. And then you have to remember when you bring in water, water is H2O. So we still have a hydrogen that's hanging on to what's going to become this alcohol group here. And so this H2O really has a plus on it that's hanging off of this carbon. And what's going to end up happening is we're going to take the hydrogen. So another water molecule can come in to grab the hydrogen. And then those electrons from the hydrogen will get sent over to the oxygen to get rid of the plus charge on the oxygen. And then we will end up with the alcohol addition. And uh, some people say, oh, can the Br minus come in to take the hydrogen? Yes, but HBr is a strong acid. Strong acids will completely dissociate to give H3O plus in solution. So we're just jumping straight to H3O plus when we're looking at this. Okay. Now, the important thing to note here, anti-formation, the bromine and the alcohol are on opposite sides of the molecule. And that is due to the bromonium ion intermediate, which we were familiar with from the dihalide addition. And then we're also sort of throwing in or adding that Markovnikov addition of the OH is going to be observed here because the water will attack the higher substituted carbon due to that partial carbocation buildup. So hopefully this explains the halohydrin formation. Mechanism is very, very similar to the dihalide addition, but you have to start considering where the alcohol is gonna attack. By the way, this would occur when you have a dihalide addition. It's just that you can't really distinguish one bromine from the other when you get to the final product. You can distinguish an alcohol from a bromine, and so it starts becoming more important that we consider where we're adding one versus another. But this same process, when we have the Br minus and the dihalide addition, that Br would come in at the same uh, type of approach as the water does when we're dealing with the halohydrin formation. It's going to observe a Markovnikov addition. You just can't tell the difference in the answer. Okay, so when we uh, take a look at this, hopefully this makes sense and you can understand the partial carbocation buildup explaining the Markovnikov addition. These alcohols should appear in one specific area over another if a Markovnikov product is possible. If they're both secondary, you may not really have one benefit over the other. Okay, so I'm going to put up some examples here. Here are a couple examples of halohydrin formations. So go ahead and pause the video as always. Work these out and then I'll put the answers up in a minute. So go ahead and pause. Okay, guys, welcome back. I'm going to put the answers up here. So you can see each of these. They all have anti-addition. And wherever the alcohol is should be where the Markovnikov alcohol addition was occurring. Okay, so take a look at these. Make sure you got these right. And other than that, uh, that's it for this particular mechanism. Uh, the next mechanisms that we're going to be doing are hydration of alkenes, which is the addition of just an alcohol without the halogen. And there's three different methods uh, that we can utilize to do that, and we'll go through each of those separately in their own video. So other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching and continuing to learn. And as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe uh, for all the latest updates or if you have any questions. Thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you in the next video.